Hi. Today we're going to talk about Christine Cortez's uh, book called Healing the Incest Wound. The reason I want to bring this book up is there's a lot of people that are uh, that have DID that are in the beginning of learning how to cope and their symptoms and understanding their DID. And Christine Cortez is the queen of SA work, which is sexual abuse work. And so you kind of want to start with that instead of jumping into the DID stuff. At least it was for me. So I'm going to read you a little bit out of her book. Um, I trigger warning. There is some um, words that might offend you or upset you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the sexual stuff and the issues with that. So, um, children pretend to be asleep or somewhere else, anywhere but in their beds being abused. Summit referred to the child's attempt to pretend the abuse was not occurring or to not respond as playing possum. Many survivors describe a process of dissociation. They separate their minds from their bodies in order to not feel their bodily sensations and not be present. Their attempt to become part of the wallpaper or woodwork or to blend into the wall serve as a protection as means of coping with abuse. Okay. Um, again, it states here, uh, children, as they reach adolescence, af after the abuse, they reach an adolescence area, which is like teen area. If a child expresses her rage, it usually is during adolescence. And she begins the process of self-determination and separation from her family, often through rebellion. Consistent with her self-blame and powerlessness, the expression of rage is likely to be directed towards herself in self-defeating and self-destructive ways, including suicidal gestures, self-mutilation, substance abuse, poor choices of friends or inmates, sexually promiscuity and prostitution and runaway attempts. These serve to reinforce her self-hatred and often result in misunderstanding or criticism. And rejection on the part of the family and others may have taken place. Thus, in turn, this reinforces her will of understanding herself. Okay. So, now, as an adult... We have to deal with and, and heal from that issue, that all those issues that we went through, going through childhood to adults to now. These are the symptoms um, on the dissociative part, because I'm not going to read all this because it would take forever. Dissociative symptoms are manifested by recurrent nightmares and night terrors, amnesia, especially for small or large segments of childhood, trance states, perceptual distortions, Feelings of depersonalization or of seeing the self from afar. Feelings of derealization, fainting spells, migrant headaches, eptic-like eptic seizures, and even DID or dissociative issues. Addiction patterns of food, alcohol, and drug intake can provide means of chemical disassociation as well. Two different things, keep that in mind. Um, additional anxiety symptoms include feeling trapped and afraid of phobic phobias about particular people and places, panic attacks, hypervigilance, flashbacks, and insomnia. Okay. Uh, physical symptoms may be seen in illness or somatic symptoms, which defy medical diagnosis. Somatic symptoms, I'm going to get on that real quick, is like with me with four, when I was abused, I have pain on my side occasionally that I don't understand why, and they can't in my doctor's office understand why but it was lean towards abuse as a four-year-old so like if something triggers that it can actually make your body feel that somatic symptom from that time period okay um another thing i want to bring up is touch um the body when touch can flinch withdraw um have violence or tearfulness or even paralysis um other physical effects include physical injury Injury to different parts of the body, sometimes resulting in disabilities and scars of injuries inflicted during the course of the abuse by the perpetrator or scars resulting from self-inflicted injury used to anesthetize yourself, distract yourself, or heighten the abuse experience at the time or later. Okay. Um, now, this is going to be a very touchy part I'm going to read, so please bear with me. Um 
this is based on sexual issues. So if you're having sexual issues, as far as like me, I'm asexual, which means I don't like sex with anybody with myself. <laughs> um, it's a personal choice. Um, aversion to sexual characterized by such negative emotions as helplessness, fear, shame, and disgust. Some survivors avoid sex due to the negative conditioning and residual fear of past abuse. They have fears associated with being coerced or terrorized, of being out of control of their bodily reactions, of being in physical pain, or of doing things that were once repulsive to them. Sexual activity has the potential to stimulate memories that are highly negative or those of which are pleasurable yet filled with shame and guilt. Certain smells, pos positions, activities, or words may be aversive and may cause problematic issues. As Maltz Holman noted, negative conditioning is very strong in survivors because the sexual abuse usually const constituted their first experience with overt sexual stimulation, and their negative feelings were reinforced through the repetition of sexual abuse. This is a great book. Um, if you're in the beginning of learning stuff, I really, really recommend this book. It is, it's a long one. Um, it even has, if you notice in the back here, it even has questionnaires. Um, you can use uh, to help yourself. So it's an older book, um, but it's a very good book. Uh, Christine Cortez is a psychologist, and this is where I kind of begun my work, um, learning about my DID, because I wanted to know about the beginning of it and how I could deal with it um, as far as, like, essay work. So that's all I got today. I uh, hope it, this was helpful. Again, uh, Talk to your mental health therapist before even beginning this work. Um, it may be something you're not ready for yet, or it may be something you are. So, all right. Loves. Bye.